Good evening, beautiful people. So, I decided I'm going to do the divider and conquer. And if you watched any of my other videos, you guys will know I keep my patterns in a folder. That way I can flip through. I put as many as I can in. It holds all the uh, little identification tags and all that and any extra pieces I happen to cut or whatever like um, from the clam up extra tabs because I decided to put on a clip I can keep in there for when I make another one you can also use a marker one of those uh, dry erase markers on here to mark where you're up to and it just wipes straight off so it they're absolutely brilliant. Um, you get them from your local office works or um, office supply store. So yeah. Alrighty guys. So I will sit that there. Um, straight into it. Once you've chose your main and lining fabrics and you've quilted them to your soft and sable, I chose to do the A, B, and C um, layouts in there. So I cut my double-sided foam to those specifications. It was just easier to quilt um, everything together doing it that way. So once you've done all that, you're going to need to cut out two pieces for your side strips. And two pieces for your zipper strip. Um, as well as an A and B for your strap pads. That's if you choose to do the pad for your strap. Because it is optional. Um, two pieces for your side strip bases. I'm using the uh, Everglow 2 from Tula Pink. Uh, absolutely gorgeous fabric. Um, one piece for your zipper strip base. Pocket A and B. I'm undecided as to which way I'm going to put it. That way or that way. I don't know yet. Two inner pocket pages. Okay. And then also the front and back for the bag. I also want to let you know I'm doing um, the large one. So in your pattern, you're going to have two lots of measurements for everything. The first measurement on everything that has a measurement, the first one is for the small size. The one after it in brackets is for the second size okay for the large so I chose to do the large and then out of the coordinating fabric you're gonna need to cut a pocket A border this is optional too you don't have to do it that's if you choose to do it you're gonna need zipper strip bindings now on you got zipper strip bindings and you got side strip bindings okay on um one of them it says let me just look is it that one ye hang on yep so the zipper strip bindings now on this tag and in the pattern where it's written it says two but if you look at the diagram for the coordinating fabric it actually shows four so i'm thinking you're only going to need two but i cut four just in case all right 
and then for your side strip bindings you need four also <coughs> On your attachment strips, you need four pocket A and B bindings, four for your handle tabs, one piece for the back strap, and now this is optional, you don't have to put that on, I am. Now, if you do the small, you only need um, to cut, what is it, I think two pieces for your handles. Because I'm doing the large, um, the material isn't wide enough, so you have to cut an extra piece to join it on for the handles. Alright, that's all the coordinating fabric out of the way. Sorry, and your bias binding. You're also going to need to cut four pieces of mesh for your pages inside the bag. And there's two vinyl compartments, so you're going to need to cut for C1 and C2 and D oh sorry C1 D1 C2 D2 and what it is is I wrote it down on the back of my tab wrong you got two thinner strips uh, let me see yep, I can put this there okay so you've got two thin strips and then you've got two quite large strips okay and that's for your vinyl then you also need to cut interfacing for your pocket A border and two pieces of interfacing for your attachment strip You're going to need, possibly, this is dependent on if you choose to do it, um, hook and loop or velcro for the back strap and hook and loop velcro for the strap pad if you choose to do those, of course, because they're optional, okay? Now on your zippers... You've got one big one, all right. And then um, you've got another two sizes. On the smaller of the three sizes, you need four, okay. And then on the other one, um, I think it only says two in the pattern. So yeah, they, they, they in, in my opinion it would be better to put all the zipper measurements with all the measurements for everything else instead of having it, you know, so many pages into the actual pattern before you get down to cutting these. To me it's just much more convenient, but anyway. They are written how they're written. All right, so for your stabilizer, for your handles and everything else, your webbing, um, you need a piece for your back strap. Don't mind the pattern on mine. Um, I'm going to be covering it. You need four for your handle tab stabilizers. Webbing, whatever you want to call it. And you need two pieces for your handle. Now onto the hardware guys, um, 
I've got a bit more than what you actually need. So I'll run through what you actually need. You need two sliders, okay? And then you need four D-rings, um, but I'm using a different style, okay? So I have four of those. And then you're going to need your zip pulls. And I counted it out. I'm pretty sure you need 10. So, 6 and 4. Yep. Yeah. I'm pretty sure you need 10. But I'll know more as I go in. If there's any changes in that, I'll put a, a little note at, at the start of the video when I edit it. Now, the additional pieces I'm putting on is I'm going to put on a handmade label on mine. And I'm also going to put on some swivel hooks on mine, or lobster clasps, um, depending on what you want to call them. And I'm going to put that on my straps, so then that way they're removable. So if I want to use this bag at home for something, and I don't want the straps getting in the way or whatever, I can just pop the straps off. So I thought I'd put them on, because one of the other bags I made... I would have liked to have had removable straps. I think it was the catch all caddy. And I didn't think to do that. So I'm going to do it this time. Alright. And I think that is everything. Everyone. So I'm going to get in. And we're going to do the handles first. And so I'll do the handles. The handle tabs. And the back strap. Okay, so what we want to do with these is with the handles, if you're doing the large, you need to take one of the large pieces and one of the smaller pieces, put right sides together, yep, okay, why did it look like it was more? put right sides together and we want to take that to our machine and sew a half inch seam on that once we sew the half inch seam on each one we'll press it open okay so you'll press your seam open and then sew that edge down as well on each one and then what that does is when you sew them into a tube, turn it right side out and put your webbing up in the middle of it for the stabilizer, it'll stop this the webbing getting hung up on this and this bundling up in there and making it look very unsightly. So we'll take those to the machine. So a half inch seam. So I sewed them together with a half inch seam and then I sewed down the two edges and then on the second one what you want to do next once you've done that is long sides together all the way down pin it or clip with your wonder clips and then you want to do a half inch seam and then take it to your iron and press it all open. Okay. And we're going to do this with all our straps. So we'll get in and sew a half inch seam on all of them on the long side. And then press them. And then get your turning tool and turn them right side out. I need to make a correction guys. I said um, when you sew your pieces together all the way down on the long edge, I said a half inch. I meant to say a quarter inch, sorry. I had the uh, half inch on the brain from the join here. That is a half inch, but your seams to sew your straps together are a quarter inch. Okay, so we've turned it in the right way, put our stabilizer in the middle of it, 
then what you want to do is make sure you have even amounts at each end okay so you'll have excess material at each end on the handles you want to turn the ends in so they look like that okay turn your raw edges in on both ends once you've done that just go ahead and sew across and then sew all four sides down with a 1 8 seam sew it all down so that way you're stitching your material to your stabilizer you want to do that on both of your straps so you should have both handles finished now the straps so what we'll do is we'll set them aside for now and with the other tubes that you've done take your four handle tabs and insert your stabilizers make sure you have equal distance of excess material at each end and then stitch all four sides do that on all four and then we'll sit them aside so on the bottom of each of our handle tabs there is a measurement on page 4 that tells you how far to measure up from the bottom and mark it and you want to do this on the side that has the seam okay so we'll do that on all four Then you're going to need your rectangle ring. I'm using ones a little bit different, but they're the same. Okay, so you're going to put it in with the seam down and just take where your stabilizer is, put it on your mark, and let the excess material go down put a wonder clip on there and then just take it to your machine and if you want to mark it you can so you just take it So just go and sew half inch seam across the bottom of each one. That secures them together and will keep your rectangle ring on there. And you want to do that on all four the same. Uh, all four are on and clipped and as you can see the end of the end of this one here is up a little bit than that one and that way when you sew across here when you attach it to your bag you will attach it face down that way 
and it will just put less bulk in your seams okay because it's not the actual stabilizer that's going to get caught it is just the excess material so we want to take them to the machine now and stitch across there so all four have been stitched all secure alright now we'll sit them there sorry I forgot you also want to look on your mach on your pattern and depending on what size bag is depending on the measurement you're going to need for here okay so just remember the first measurement is small second measurement is large and you want to measure up from the bottom and you've got two marks okay so just mark them do that on all four and what I'm going to do is I'm going to refer to the straps so the part without the seam is the front the part with the seam I'm going to refer to as the back that way I think it'll be less confusing for everybody okay so you want to mark those on the front of your strap now we sit them over here then you want to take one of your handles and on each front side there's a measurement that you need to mark and I'm pretty sure this is on page 4 still yep you want to do that on there and on the other side okay so that was one strap and then your second one so there and there then you want to take your slider put it in and over and take this down line it up with your mark and then you want to sew your X and your box okay on there to attach it and do the same on the other one Okay. So next we want to take our straps and from the bottom up there's a measurement and you want to mark that on each end of the same strap. So that's on the back side of your strap and do it on the other one also then we want to get a slider so put it over and over again and then take the end and line it up with that mark you see and then you want to take it to the machine so you square with your cross you want to do the same on your other one take it to the machine and sew your square 
Now, what I would do is I would start about here and I would travel up and then go over that, make my box with the X and then come back down a little and finish down there. Okay, and I'd do that on both. So. Both nicely attached now. So what we're going to do is with the seam up, the back side of our strap, take one of your tabs, put it through, and then go back up and over your slider now the seam is on the inside and can't be seen take your other tab Okay, seam up, so here's one tab, here's your other one, up and over, take it to the mark that you made, and then take it to the machine and sew it down exactly like we did here. And then that is one strap set complete. Okay. Second one all done. So I meant to say on page four, figure four, it shows a measurement to mark up. And that's how you know how big to do your X and your box there. Alrighty, so that's both handle sets done like so and set them aside now with the um, back strap once you've inserted the stabilizer make sure you've got equal distance at the end and then sew all four sides and then what you're going to do on page 5 figure 5 it shows a measurement for you to put your hook and loop tape or your velcro the soft piece down on the back side of your strap so the one with the seam Okay, sew that down. On the other side, there's two measurements there and there. You just want to mark them down. Okay, on each end. And then that is that strap completed. Just put your other piece of Velcro on there just so you don't lose it. And we can sit that aside. I decided to go ahead and go to page 12 and get the strap pad out of the way. Now this is optional and it's um, not called for if you're doing the small size. All right. So you just need to get your pad A and B. And on your A, you need to mark a line. It says how far down from the top you need to mark it just mark a line all the way across 
and then put the soft side of your Velcro down. Um, I just used a bit of uh, washable glue and then I just sewed it down on all four sides. And then on your pad B, it wants you to mark the same distance from the bottom up and then put your other piece of Velcro down. Now you put it above the line, okay? Don't put it below the line. Put it above the line and sew it down like you did the first one. And then it also has two other measurements it wants you to mark down. So you're measuring from the bottom up and then up again. And then all we've got to do is put them together. Go to the machine, sew all four sides down. Then sew across these and this will help it fold. Okay, so we'll do that. So that's all done. Now the only thing left to finish that off is just to round the corners, all four corners, and it'll tell you which uh, circular ruler you need. Round all four corners and bind it. And then our strap pad is done. So there we go everyone, our strap pad is complete, nicely bound, so we can just fold that up and sit it aside and it's ready for when we finish our bag. Okay, so next up in our pattern is, this is getting ready to actually assemble the bag. So it calls for our A and B pocket. So these are my two pockets here. Now A and B are identical. So it's a matter of choosing which one would be the better one for the front of my bag. And I want this one because it has the full picture of the lion. And that is what I want to showcase. Okay, so since this one here has been cut off, now I could put that on the front of my bag because the front of the bag calls for a border and that's where the border goes. And what the border is designed to do is to pretty much let you know this is the front of the bag. Um, so yeah, I decided... I didn't want the border now, even though I've cut it out, because of the fact that it's going to obscure what I'm wanting to showcase. And even if I put it on this one. So, you know, it's going to cut off that. And I don't want that. Okay? So I'm not going to put that on. Now, I thought, okay, so I won't put it on the front. I'll put it on the back, but I'm like, mm, no, nah. what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the lining side as my back pocket instead, okay, so I won't be putting on the border, but I will show you how to do it, all right. Now, I also want to know from all you guys, with my tutorials, do you want me to show or would you like me to show the actual sewing? So where I think it might help um, in some parts of the bag, I will show that. But what I'm, what I'm wanting is, do you guys want me to show it the whole time and sort of like speed up? The bits where I am actually sewing, um, you know, just to, that way it can it keeps the length of the video down. Or are you guys happy for me to just lay out the steps like I have been um, and sew it 
and then come back and show it done. So please let me know in the comments um, which way you would prefer and just note that if you do want me to sew, um, I will speed it up. So don't be looking at the video and be thinking, OMG, look at how fast this lady can sew because that wouldn't be the case. I would not be sewing that fast, okay? So yeah, please let me know in the comments what you would like. Alrighty, so back to the pattern. So what you need to do is get your binding, uh, not your binding, sorry, your border and the interfacing needed for the border and follow your interfacing directions. Usually it's um, adhesive on one side. So you want to put it lining side up, uh, sorry, main fabric side down. Take the adhesive side of your interfacing, put it on and then take it to your iron. And what I would do is I would put it on my ironing board that way. I would put one of my Teflon sheets over the top. I'll quickly show you that. So here's one of my sheets. I would put it over the top and then I would put my iron down. That way if any of the edges might happen to be peeking out like this little one here is, I'm not going to get any of this on my iron so then when I do go to iron you know another part of material I'm not going to get like sticky residue on my material and wreck it. Okay so iron that down and then on page 5 part A you'll find the measurements that you need to cut your zippers to length all right, and then on the part B, it will show you a measurement. So just take your ruler and from the top down, draw a line across, okay? Then take your border and put main sides, main fabric together and put it just below that line and then you want to sew I'll just grab my stiletto you want to sew your quarter inch seam along the top there then take it to your iron and press it up and it should come just to the top of the pocket if it goes a little bit over, don't worry about that. Then just seal it one eighth around these three edges. That way it will stay smooth for you for when we go to, to put on our zipper. Okay. Um, if it overhangs a little bit, just flip it over like so and just trim it off. Okay. So even though I'm not going to have a border on my bag, I do want to put on one of these handmade badges. Okay, so what I'm going to do is traditionally you would center it on your bag. I don't want to do that. It's going to end up, you know, wrecking the design. So I'm going to put it about here I think like that so what I'm going to do is grab my pen uh, now this is a pen it's my friction pen as you know it comes off with heat but it's not going to be seeable anyway it's going to be underneath the badge so I'm going to line it up where I sort of want it about there and I'll just mark it Put it back down, apply a bit of pressure, that will indent the foam, get my X-Acto knife,
then you just put the backing plate on now you can either fold the little arms this way so out here or you can fold them into the center it doesn't really matter I'm going to fold mine in All right, that's down now normally if this was a bag um, say that I was making for somebody else or I was going to sell then I would match the fabric so I would get another piece of this and I would put it over the top I'm going to keep this bag um, and this is going on the front of the bag so you're not really going to see down inside here okay if this was on the actual bag front and when you opened it like say on a place for everything you will see the lining inside the bag then I would definitely match it regardless of whether it's mine or not but you're not going to see this really but just to stop these parts here catching on things when I put it in or catching on my hand or anything like that I just got a little piece of um, off-cut fabric I put a bit of um, interfacing on it and I'm just going to put it over the top of that and I'll just use a little bit of fabric glue That glue will also um, prevent this piece from actually fraying. Alrighty. So that's on there. Now we need to attach our zipper. Okay, so for this part of the pattern in the pattern they actually have you join the zipper to the bag like that so you would sew a generous quarter inch across and then fold it back sew it again to seal down your raw edges then bind the top of the zipper okay because it would be like that so I tend to do things a little differently when you go to bind that you're gonna have to contend with the rest of the pocket okay so what I do is I'll bind my zipper first so I'll just sit my pocket out of the way I'll take my binding piece take it to my iron and I will fold it in half like that and I'll press it with the iron get a good crease in it then open it out okay and fold each edge into that crease and then iron that as well so it will stay down do the same with the other side so you have just made your piece like that then what I'll do is I'll take some of my double sided tape if I can find the end and I will run a piece of double sided tape on each side of the center fold okay so the original one that we put in it I will run a piece of double-sided tape on either side of that and then I will push this down again so it will stick to it 
and then that way it will stay like that okay so there we have it it's laid down and then what I do is just to make sure it's going to stick well is I just take my stiletto and run it all the way along apply a good bit of pressure okay and then to pull up this piece of paper some people have a bit of a trouble getting it up how I do it is I use the tip of my stiletto to poke a hole and I sort of flick it there we go so I just sort of put it in and like pull it up so I'll now pull that up and then I'll push down my fabric So they're both pushed down now. So this is what you should have. Okay. And then just take it back to your iron, fold it over and give it a good press again to get that crease back. And then what we're going to do is on our zipper tape, see if I can get it in focus. We want to run another row of double-sided tape along here okay and we'll do that on each side or you can alternatively um, run it along here could run it along there and then that way you're guaranteed not to get it where you're going to stitch okay like so I'll bring it up so you can see and you can do that on each side and once you've done that remove your tape and then you want to get your zipper face up put it in try and have it so it's centered okay whoops so it's centered so you've got about equal amounts of excess tape at each end and then when you push it down that will hold it in place and then you just want to go to your machine I'll see if I can zoom in 
go to your machine and so about one eighth from the top and so all four sides okay so go along the bottom the top and each end and secure that on to the top of the zipper tape there so I'll do that and there it is just attached with the double sided tape so I'll take it to the machine and I'll sew around all four edges so there we have it nicely sewn down and now we can move on to attaching the zipper to the pocket so we want to place it face down so right sides together overhang the zipper just a little bit from the bag pocket edge okay and Joe and Joe so a generous quarter inch seam all the way across the top once we've done that we will then press it to the other side and then sew down the edge of the zipper tape to enclose all the raw edges okay so we'll go and sew that down now okay so I sewed the zipper down all right generous quarter inch seam now I just wanted to give you guys a little hint um, I'm not sure if you've tried it before or what but what I find easiest because I like to have a little overhang here okay so when you go to turn it you have that that little bit of zipper tape there but if you try and sew it this way it's hard to know if you're getting it um, equal all right keeping it the same distance all the way down even though you have it held with wonder clips as you remove them your zipper tape can move and you don't know from this side if it's moved over unless of course you know you see the top of your pocket so what I do is I wonder clip it this way okay so I put my wonder clips on like that so the flat part is on this part and I sew it from this side okay so I put it down I have it at the distance I want and then I put that down on the bed of my machine like that oh the baby's dreaming can you hear that baby's dreaming I'll show you Poor little man. His sister left today and went to her new home. Uh, he's not handling it too well. He's a very sweet little boy, that man. I'm going to be sad to see him go when he finds a new home. Okay, so back to the topic at hand. I wonder clip it so I have equal distance of overhang on my zipper tape. And then I take it to my machine and I sew it that way down and that way I can keep it level I can keep my generous quarter inch here and I can keep an eye on the zipper tape and as I'm sewing say for example I had a wonder clip here and here so obviously I've removed this one I'm here at my sewing and as I'm going down if this happens to move in or out 
I can use the tip of my stiletto to push it back to where it needs to be. And then I just keep sewing. So I just thought maybe you guys might appreciate that little tip. It might help you um, with, your zipper with your zippers. All right, so now what we need to do is I use my stiletto and I fold it back like that and I use this to push it down just to give it a bit of a crease. It's not going to stay there obviously because it's too thick with the uh, double sided foam in there but giving it a bit of a press can help and then I will take it to the machine now and I'll sew along the very bottom edge of my zipper tape here. Now be careful, make sure you know you push under anything with your stiletto or with a, a, a nice tool. You can even use a hem unpick if you don't have a stiletto. Um, you're looking for the you know the tip and also be mindful that your bobbin is going to show. So make sure you have the right color cotton that you want to show on the front of your bag. Okay. All right. So I'll go and do that and then we can move on to the next step. So the back is nicely sewn down. And once you do that, you then need to look on page six and it will show that this needs to be trimmed to a certain height. So what you do is you measure from here out. So from the top down until you get to the required height and then trim it off the bottom of the pocket. So there will be a little bit of a difference and that's because of the added zipper up here. So you just need to trim off the excess from the bottom. Then we need to move on to pocket B and repeat the steps we've just done with pocket A. So bind the top of your zipper and then attach your zipper to pocket B. Next what we need to do is on page 6 um, step C, there is a measurement where you have to go from the bottom up and draw a line from one side to the other. And then there's a second measurement where you measure from the bottom up and draw a line. Now, i done it, but I didn't draw... The full line I didn't see the need to do a full line so I just done marks all the way along and that's what I can use as my guide to line up on and the same with the second mark okay I just done marks along there so they are the two marks that we will need to line up with and then there's also another two measurements. The first one is how long you need to mark the line down. And the second measurement is how far in you need to mark that line. So you need to mark two. Okay. Two lines. I'll just adjust this a little bit guys there we go that might be a bit better so yeah you need to mark a line right across the top right across the top then in the next step which is step C with the the two eye marks so that measurement is how long you need to mark your line down 
And then there's another measurement, which is how far in from each side you need to put your mark. And don't forget that the marks, you got different measurements depending on the size of the bag that you made, okay? So always remember, if you're doing the large, the measurements you need are in the brackets, all right? Then just get your, your glue stick and your piece of Velcro. And then take that and put it there. So you line that up with the first line, okay? And it goes between the two marks that you marked here and here. So just push that down, then take it to your machine so one eight all the way around so all four sides so there we have it attached next up we're going to place on the strap so if you decided to put this in this is our next step and if you remember when we finished this strap we had marked two marks on each end so I've just gone over them with a bit of white chalk so you can see mine. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to place the strap. I'll turn it this way. So the edge of our Velcro lined up with the bottom line. So you placed it just below that line. And we want the top edge of this one to line up with the top line. Then we want to go to our machine and just stitch up to the furthest line across, do your box with your X and then come back down and across and we want to do that on each end, okay? So you'll just stitch, you can, you can stitch across here first if you like, and then come up, do your box, do your X, and come back down. So there it is, all finished. That's what it should look like. Then next, what we want to do is still on page 6, section D, there's a measurement that we've got to measure in from each side. Okay. And then one measurement that goes across the top there. So you should have two lines that run from top to bottom. Up there. Up there. And then one that comes across the top. And these are for our straps. 
So what you need to do is get your strap. And place it down on the inside of that line. Okay, like so. You want to sew up to the mark that you marked way back at the start. Do your box with your X and then come back down and finish it off. When you do that, just make sure that your straps aren't twisted so you sew them on like that okay that's the underside so you want to make sure that when you put them down they are the right way up so that there should be like that okay and then what you can do is you follow it around Oop. follow your strap around with your hand so you have the top up and go like that And then that way you know it's not going to be twisted or anything like that, okay? You want to do that to the front and back of your bag. So I sewed this one down already. And... I have the buckle, the slider, on this side, all right, I'll just move these out of the way. So on the second one, when you put it down, I don't want the slider on the same side, okay. So I'm going to put it over here and then I'll follow my strap like so. And I'll sew those down. And then that way when you assemble your bag the sliders will be the same. So we'll go ahead and we'll do that. We'll sew those down. With the attaching of the straps, um, they're quite thick because you're going through two layers. So it makes it hard to pin or clip the strap down. So the way I do it is as I'm sewing it, I sort of use my hand to keep them so they're one on top of the other to keep them lined up. But I also use it to make sure that they're not going over your marked line to keep them them straight because prior to sewing them down they're gonna want to move as you're stitching them so you can guide them to keep them straight with your fingers um, other than that that's really the only tip I've got on on your straps you want to try and keep them as on top of each other as you can so once we've done that we then want to take our pocket 
and put it on. And because this is on the edge, you can clip that in place. And it needs to be lined up. Oh, just thinking. I can't remember if I said... When we um done our pocket, I'll have to check my video to make sure that I did mention about trimming the height. You have to measure from the top down. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I did. All right, so we want to keep it lined up with that line and clip it down. It's beautiful. And then just go around and clip it all down. And then when you start sewing your pocket down, what I recommend is, it is mentioned in the um, pattern too, and I do find this to be the best um, way to do it, is start sewing from this edge, from sew along the top. And that puts it down, which then prevents a lot of movement with, with whatever you're sewing down when you sew it along this way. Same goes for your pockets when you're inserting a zipper and everything. So I would sew it along there. Now, if you want to, um, one sec, if you want to try and prevent this from moving a bit, you can put in a couple of pins into the gap with your zipper tape here. Okay. So you can just put a couple of pins in there. And then that will prevent this movement because it's a bit far down, you can't clip it. And then you can just use your stiletto. I use my stiletto when I'm um, sewing a lot to make sure, you know, things are where they need to be. All right, so we go and sew all four sides. Now, if you're like me, and you don't put your zipper pull on yet because I don't. Um, I wait until I get the top sewn down so then it's not hindering me at all with here, with sewing here. So just don't forget when you get to here to put your zip pull on before you sew down the edge, okay? So once you've done that, We want to go in your pattern, page 7 I think, it tells you what size circular ruler you need. Just go line it up with the edges and then just round your corners. You want to round all four corners, okay, and then I flip it to the underside prior to doing this with my strap and I trim my zipper tape that way so I would have it turned that way put your ruler down and then trim your zipper tape just makes it a bit easier and then once you've done that then you want to pin down your straps to the front of your bag to keep them out of the way for the rest of the bag assembly Okay, so I just sort of pinned them a little bit there. And then that is our bag front and back completely done and we can sit them aside. Then on page 7, I'll show easy way to do that with zipper tape in case um, anybody new watching hasn't seen my previous videos. 
So you separate your zipper tape, you get two teeth, okay, use an old pair of scissors, not your good ones, and just nip it off on an angle, alright. As you can see, it was only a little bit, it was only two teeth. Take your pull, insert it in. Where are we? There we go. Now on the side, you only want it inserted. Trying to get it so it'll focus. because of the glare that part that comes down here and then you got the groove you only want to insert it a little way past that stopper there on the side you insert it too far in and when you try and put the teeth in from the other side there's too much teeth in there and you can't get it to go on okay so you only want to insert it about halfway in that in that piece there. Only insert it halfway. And then when you put it in the other side, the teeth will match and you'll be able to put the, the zipper pull on. Okay, and I'll show you. Now this will work with any zipper pull. Doesn't matter where it comes from, what zipper tape, doesn't matter. Put a little bit in and then I support it with these three fingers okay hold it use your other hand and you angle it and so it's in take it down to a solid surface support the tape either side of the zipper pull okay put pressure on the solid surface and then you should be able to pop it, provided it, yep. And then you pull. And that's it. Easy as. And it will work every time. Like, I could pull it off and do it again and it would be fine. So now we need to get your C1, your little piece of vinyl, and your C2. And insert your zipper okay so you just attach it like you normally would attach vinyl to a zipper or a zipper to anything really um, with your vinyl and mesh the way that I do it is I have my zipper face down so wrong side up Put your mesh down, put it on the top of the zipper, like that, and then sew along, and once you've sewn it down, then you fold it over like so, and then sew down again, all the way along, and then you just repeat, so turn it over, and then put your other piece of vinyl on the other edge, sew it, and then turn it and sew it down. Okay? Oh. And then you sew it down. So that's how you attach your vinyl. And then put your zipper pull on 
and then you want to look on page seven and it will tell you what height you need to trim your page to. So you measure from the top edge here down and then trim it up and then it will also tell you your circular ruler then you just want to take it and just round all four corners of your pocket trim up any excess zipper tape so I don't know if you can see corner um, get a piece of paper There you go. So you just round up all four corners. And then once you've finished C1 and 2, you want to do it to your D1 and D2 pieces also. Okay. Then we want to get our other zipper tape and our four mesh pieces that we had and attach them to our zipper tape the same as we did with the vinyl okay so you just lay it upside down put it on the top top piece there sew down and then fold that over so your zipper comes up like that and then stitch down the very edge again and that will enclose your raw seams. When you're doing that part, um, I tend to have my zipper this way up. Okay, so the mesh is on the bottom. You need to just apply a little bit of um, tension on your mesh. Because if you don't, without you realizing it, um, it will like come up. So you won't get, um, how do I put it, like a quarter inch here that's been sewn down. Okay, you'll end up with a big bubble of mesh up there that you haven't realized that snuck up under here on your zipper tape without you realizing it. And then when you look at the back of it, it'll go nice for a little bit. And then you'll have all this extra mesh okay so a bit like there really it's done it done it to me a little bit there I mustn't have been paying as close attention so it's done it to me a little bit just here whereas here it is much nicer okay so much cleaner there but here you can see there's a bit more there and then I must have my, my attention must have slipped for a bit and that happened and then as you can see my attention's back and it's nice and tight again okay so once you've done all four then you want to grab your page one and put your zipper tape down on the top edge Clip it in place and sew down from this corner across. Put your zipper pull on and then sew the other three sides. All right. Then we're going to turn it over. Going to take a ruler and just trim it. Tr trim the excess off, provided you've you know put your zipper pull on and everything. So you just take a ruler, turn it over. Trim the excess off.
knocking you guys around there. Here it is. This is what I should have showed you. A little bit, little bit there too. A little bit of like um, slack. That's the word I'm after. A little bit of slack there. Okay, but that's what it should look like. All right, two sewn lines there on top. Then. Line it up on your pocket, clip it all the way, clip it there, or what I tend to do on mesh is I pin it because with here I found you know, as soon as you take your clip off, as you're coming down, you take your clip off and your zipper tape is going to move and it's going to come out over the edge like that. All right. So what I do, and I do this with vinyl pockets too, um, if I'm sewing them down to another part of my bag, is I get my nice long pins. I line my zipper tape up neatly with the edge. And then I pin it. But I pin the bottom bit. Okay? Not up here where it's going to be in my way. And then that way I don't have to worry about removing clips. My zipper tape isn't going to move because it's pinned. It can't move. And it alleviates one less thing you've got to worry about when you're trying to make a nice finish. And then, as we all know, when you're sewing mesh, it likes to bunch up, and pucker, and fold over on itself like this. So I also get them and I go around like this and that just prevents movement with my mesh and gives a nicer finish. You know it can still move here of course but it prevents a lot of the worry in the bulk of the bag. So I'll do that all the way around. but I do it high enough where it's not going to be a hindrance to my foot, but also low enough to still create, to still do the purpose that I want it to do, which is to prevent the mesh from moving. Then go and sew the top edge again, starting in this corner and across. Then put on your zipper pull. Do the other three sides. Then flip it. Trim off the excess like i done a minute ago with the blue side. And then you need to look on page 8 and it will tell you the size of the circular ruler that you need go and trim round your corners all four on both pages one and two all right and then stitch 
stitch down your one eighth again just to secure them so then they don't move when you go to bind all right so once you've done that we can put them over to the side for a quick second then you want to grab your attachment strips so the pieces of coordinating fabric that you cut that are, you should have labeled attachment strips as well as the stabilizer that you cut for the attachment strips and then you want to take two of your attachment strips wrong side up and iron on your stabilizer and you should have an equal distance all the way around except for sort of on the ends here but that's about a quarter of an inch there once you've done that you've ironed them both down get one with stabilizer one without right sides together take it to your machine and sew a quarter inch across here on both ends okay so it'll look just like this one and then press your seams open all right so you're sewing the short edge quarter of an inch press your seams open and then you want to turn it in the right way just like that Then we want to take this one and it says um, on the lining side <coughs> excuse me of your page but really you know if it's if it's oh that's another thing I wanted to say too when you're putting your mesh on your pocket on your pages if you're using directional fabric be mindful that you put the mesh on the right, right, on the top, not on the bottom. So I had actually pinned mine down, was getting ready to sew it down, and because it was on this one, actually, there's two birds that were going up, or it might be the other one, and one bird going down. So I wanted the two going up to be the top, so I put the zipper up there forgetting about my other side and it turned out my lines were upside down so I'm like oh okay I'm gonna have to flip it so I flipped it around and put it on the other top end either way the bird there's still a bird going up but it's just the way the material had been cut I had two specifically on that page and I wanted the two showcased a bit more but it doesn't matter so yeah just be mindful if you've got a directional fabric that you do put it on the top of your page then take your attachment strip now I want you to measure in um, one second I'll grab my rule so on page 9 it gives you the measurement and it wants you to measure measure in okay equal distance and put your attachment strip there and then sew it down with a 1 8 seam on the bottom but you could just put your ruler underneath or use your, your mat and just make sure it's in the middle and it's equal distance instead of having to mark it. Go to the hassle of doing that. Like It's just easier just to put it. It's just got to be in the center. So equal distance from each end. And then take that and sew that down one eighth. And then it's time. In the pattern it says make your bias binding, but... I always do all this kind of stuff at the start because then it's ready for when you get to these points because I really don't want to put the F into getting this far and then having to stop and make bias binding which is tedious, time consuming. So I get it all ready when I'm getting all my components ready. So that way it's there and I can just get in now and bind my bag, bind my pages, sorry. So once you attach it to attachment strips uh, to your pocket pages depending on what side you want to attach it to then bind both pages 
All right. So the vinyl, uh, not the vinyl, the uh, binding is all sewn down. And in the pattern it says to attach these strips here, your attachment strips. Pretty sure it was the lining side. Yeah, on the lining side of each page. But I had a look in there and when the bag is open, okay, so if you have it on the lining side of each one, when your bag is open, your main fabric will be like that. So if you want to show, I have on both sides, if you want your main fabric up, then by all means, put both of them on the lining side. But when mine's open, I want it to show the main and the lining because that's a pretty print. So I don't want to have both the same prints facing up. So I don't want on each side. Okay, so they're done. And then after that, we want to get our zipper strip and our zipper. And this should be the last zipper that we have, I'm pretty sure. And then we just want to attach our zipper to it. Now, if you have directional print, like I do, make sure you have them together the right way, okay? So when you've cut them, make sure you sew them together on the right size. Like if I sew mine together that way, that'll be wrong because my birds don't line up. So if I put this one on here, like so, you'll see, or down here for example, see the birdie lines up here, and the wing here, and then the bird here. and so on. So I'm just going to go and attach my zipper strip and my zipper together. So we would do right sides together. Sew it down and then fold it over like that and enclose the raw edges and then attach it to the other side as well. And with the first side attached, when you go to put on the second side, make sure that they are level, the ends are level, and then just clip it all down, clip it all down along the length of your zipper tape and attach it like you just did with the last one. Remember when um, you put your wonder clips on that the flat part is on the bottom. And it upside down. And also remember your threads. Okay. Um, it's not so much an issue when you're putting the zipper on. But when you go to do your top stitching, your bobbin will be seen. Okay. So it will be seen there. So if you want either coordinating or matching so it'll blend or if you want it to stand out like this one all right both sides are down and what we need to do on page nine it'll give you a width 
you need to measure your zipper strip so from this side to this side and it'll give you a width on page 9 if this is too wide you need to trim it but say for example you've got to cut it down to two inches that's not the correct measurement but just say two inches this side is one and a half and this side is one and a quarter what you need is to take a quarter off this side and half off this side so then that way your zipper is still center okay so look at the measurement on page nine measure across see what the difference is and then measure each side to see where it needs to come off okay so once it's trimmed the length we need to put our zipper pulls on and i keep losing my scissors And just nick out the two teeth put it in a little the weight's pulling against me that one on now turn it around and do exactly the same on the other end Trim the ends to your zipper tape. I don't think you would really need to um, sew across the end, you know, to secure it because your zip pulls are in the middle. Um, I really don't think. You got any chance of them coming off at all? Okay. Now you want to get your zipper strip base. Okay. Put it across the end. You can put a couple of wonder clips on it if you like. Mine are down the end, so I'll do it in a second. But right. what you want to do now, whoop, pulling that has bonked you guys around. Sorry about that. So now what we want to do is take this to the machine. So a quarter inch seam, then so a one eighth inch seam and a 3 8 okay but you want to actually when you sew it you want to have it zipper side up all right so go and th and sew the three different widths on this end and then take this end 
and do exactly the same on this end okay so you three different widths on that end as well so this is what it should look like with your three different depths with your seams okay and then when you do that you want to get your binding <coughs> excuse me for your zipper strip and do the same seams again okay the same widths again that you did to actually attach your zipper strip to your zipper strip base so you would have it like this on your machine and put your binding on and then what you want to do so here's your zipper is open it out this way and then bring that over like so okay make sure your raw edges are under and then just sew down on the edge of your binding there but make sure it is going this way not onto your seam onto your zipper okay so you have it going this way and it should look like that when you've put it down so you want to do that to each end of your zipper strip and that will then be called the zipper loop and then we can sit that aside then we need to get our two side strips okay so if you remember we cut two of those so you want to get both of those as well as your side strip bases and essentially we do exactly the same thing that we just done with the zipper loop okay and join them all right and then get your side strip bindings and attach them the same way all right sew them down and then sew them flat like that and you want to do that on both ends on each one so that is what a finished one will look like okay so once we've done all the seams on the zipper strip and the two side strips we then want to go and find the centers of the side strips zipper strip your vinyl pocket and your page pocket and your front and back of your bag so with the page pocket and your vinyl pocket pocket the easiest way is to just measure it with your ruler sugar just measure it with your ruler till you find the center mark it with your pin you only need the one um, just in that there so you just mark it with your pin and then you want to find the center on your vinyl I just used a permanent marker as well as on this end here and the sides okay so just measure it with your ruler you can fold it in half if you want 
just but I just measured with my ruler and then put my marks on all four corners on all four sides do that to both C C and D then with your side loops and your zipper loop the easiest way is to get your two seams where you put the base in and put them together like that and then just run your fingers along and stick in a pin top and bottom okay and then holding that still securely just run your fingers along and stick in a pin top and bottom all right that one there needs adjusting so I run it I pull the pin into the corner bring it up and then stick the tip in and then put it back in so you do that top and bottom and then you take those two marks that's why I had adjusted it you take those two marks and you line them up with the other two that you done here and then pull your sides out and do exactly the same thing top and bottom and then this side out top and bottom okay now you want to do that to both of them so this one's been marked as well and your zipper loop okay so mark it too then we can put them aside and I done my page front and back as well okay so all four sides you want to mark the centers then you want to get your C pocket and your D pocket and which made me think did I put that on yes I did with your zipper pull up like on the top not not that way all right so you want it this way and then you want to get your page and the side that you sewed the strip onto okay so if you followed the directions in the pattern and done it to the lining side then you want to flip that over okay and then pull that strip out and match that pin up with your center mark and what did I do there. move my ruler out of the way and then you want to clip it down all the way across okay and then take it to the machine and just sew a 1 8 seam allowance all the way down attaching that to your vinyl all right then you want to take your zipper loop I'll just move that out of the way and with the lining side okay with the lining side put it put your you see inside and match up your centers all right until you've gone all the way around so like that 
Okay. So all I did was I'll take a few off just to show. So this is the outside. This is my main fabric here. So I just got my lining and lined it up. I'm getting hung up on the pins here. Lined it up with my page center with the pin and then clipped them down. And I done one on each side of that pin and then I got this center pin and lined it up with the mark on my C and then I did the same on the sides and then I went along and fitted all my other wonder clips on until the zipper loop was attached all the way around and now I'll go and sew that down and I'm pretty sure I haven't looked but I'm pretty sure it would be a quarter inch seam but I will double check that yep I just checked and it says a scant quarter inch so I want you to do just under a quarter inch seam allowance all the way around so once we do that we will then repeat exactly what we done except we will flip it the other way up and then we will attach it to the other one here okay so i started just here near the bottom corner i have the vinyl on the bottom and i go slow so i make sure my edge is aligned hump jumper there Don't be afraid to manipulate your bag, scrunch it, whatever you need to do to be able to get it around and you're going to need to go slow on this as we get further into it because of all the seams and um, straps and everything. Okay, so that is all sewn down. 
now. And then I have pinned the other one on. And something I wanted to say too is when you're sewing around, don't remove the pin from here because you need it to line up the others that go on also. Okay, so keep your center pin here. The other pins could probably come out. I don't think it would matter. But I just went and put them back in because it would probably be easier to line up if they were there. Push them down though because it'll be easier when I'm sewing down the other bit. So then on the other side, you just want to put in the D compartment like we did the C, okay? And then to sew it down, I think it's gonna be easier if we open it, all right? Because it will give more well, for one, less bulk. We're not having to deal with all this. And it will be easier to maneuver this under the machine without all that. So I'll go ahead and sew all this down now. Both sides are on now. Alrighty. Oh, um, something I meant to say, make sure your zipper pulls are in, away from your edge. <coughs> Sorry about that. One of my other dogs was kindly letting themselves in and the ones in here objected to it. The babies are bigger too. I thought I would show them playing. They come all the way from their little pen out in the lounge room, up the hallway, into the sewing room to keep me company. Where did little Nala go? There she is. Nala. Babies. Babies. Come on. Nala. Hello, babies. Hello, little cooties. Hello, little cooties. You're a rough nut, hey? Are you playing with somebody, hey? Is he playing with you, Bjorn? Hey, baby. What you doing, hey? Okay, so that's all on. Now what we need to do is take one of our side strips. And you want to get the bottom part. Have it so right sides are facing, okay? I might zip it up. Oh, I will say, um, I found it very handy with my stiletto um, on the corners going around the corners on the second piece it it just made holding it and able to go slow going around there you can use it to you know pull it adjust it and comes in very very handy okay so back to this so we want right sides facing, fit it around the bag, and then we want to line it up. So this is where I'm talking we're going to have the bulk is here. So that's pretty well centered.
I've finished sewing that on. Um, I recommend opening the zipper back up too as it enables you to move this out of the way so you've got more flexibility folding it around. Um, <coughs> it, it's not as easy on the corners to get around there but here you're really going to need a spacer or a jump humper or something um, to that effect to get over these. It it was, they're very thick. Um, I had to use my jump humper, otherwise my machine would not have gotten over that. So that's going to be um, fun putting on the next one. But uh, for now, um, I think it'd be easier to bind it bind this edge now um, less than when if you know if we put the other one on here and put it around it's more bulk we've got to try and move out of the way um, so bind this I was considering um, putting the binding on here first before I sewed it onto here but I thought no the extra line of stitching is not going to hurt it believe me so I thought no I won't do it that way I will sew it on and then I'll do the binding on it but I'm going to bind this now um, and <laughs> uh, I recommend uh, when you're maneuvering it and squashing it and everything goes like don't be afraid to squash it yeah you're gonna need to just be careful of your pens though uh, they they will bite you if you uh, push them unawares so yeah there was that um, also what else I want to say oh yes um, before we go and bind just go around and check it so go around like this to make sure you caught it all um, in the in the sewing so there was a part on one of the corners on mine uh, right here that just it didn't get caught so I written, went and um, touched that up but it was on this corner here over here because of all this here so it was um, where was it here it was right there so it just didn't catch so I went and went and sewed that down so yeah I'm gonna get in and bind this now all these threads okay both side strips are on Move the table out of the way. And it's looking lovely. And what you got to do um, after you do the side strips is on the inside where you bound the join of the zipper strip and the side strip, it also wants you to sew it down again. So when we bound it, it was like that it was a seam that sat in it was a seam that sat in like that okay and what you got to do now is get it and push it flat push it flat against the bag instead of having it bulb that way and then sew it down again it will be seen on the outside so here it is here so make sure you use like a matching thread or coordinating um, uh, it depends on you know the threading that you've used but if you don't want it to stand out you want to try and blend it um, or a different thread but it you know it is hard like I kept it pretty well straight on most of it but because it is so thick um, on these parts here it it is an absolute nightmare on how thick that is with these here okay um, so as you can see you know here isn't ideal but then I kept it pretty well lovely down there but you know it is what it is so yeah <clears throat> I must admit um, 
Oh, also when I was sewing it down, so I had it like that under my machine, okay, and I had it the zipper open. So I'll demonstrate. I had this open. Now what that sewing it down does is it gives it a bit more structure because this here was very like flimsy. Not flimsy but floppy is the word. Um, since I've sewn it down it is a lot more stiffer now. Um, but as I, when I was sewing it I had it that way under the machine. So this here was on this here is the bed of my machine. So I had it under like that. And I highly recommend having how can I do this to show it? I'll do it that way. There we go. Right. Oh, I'm bonking you guys around. So the table is the bed of my machine. I had it under there like that. And as I was sewing it, I was pulling from this side and applying tension on this side. So on both sides like this. Okay. Because when you do your seam, um, it's not going to, if you just sew it straight down without applying that tension, it is going to like go like that on you. Okay, so if you want a nice crisp um, top stitch down there, you're going to want to apply a bit of pressure, like tension, just on that seam to get it pulled out so you can sew it down nice and flush there. Alright, so yeah, I did, uh, I did apply a bit of pressure as I was pulling and it just pulled it, pulled it flat more and sewed it down but like other than that it was really easy to sew all the way around except for here these are the only issue bits so they are now what we want to do is get our back and front of our bag and line them up and I put them on so if you did what I done and already put in left your um, center markers in I keep stabbing myself I don't know how many times I have stabbed myself with a needle uh, a needle a pin tonight it is not funny so I did take a pin out of that strap earlier but yeah so we're just going to line up I'm gonna zip that back up because otherwise it's going to keep flopping around while I'm trying to demonstrate here. Beautiful pulls these. Really easy to get your hand into. Okay. So I don't think it really matters on here which way you have it front and back like pretty much they're the same so it would just depend on you know if you've done your, your pages in there differently or whatever so we're going to line them up and I pushed my clips over there Line up our centers. These wonder clips that I got are ideal on those really thick seams. They were brilliant. They really were. So I like to line up all four points first. They uh they don't have a flat bottom, they're curved. On each one so it doesn't matter which way you put it up but they can clamp down like they're a lot the size comparison compared to these little fellas um, these ones do a great job don't get me wrong but on the bulk here these were brilliant really were 
And I think I got them from my local sewing shop like um, here in Australia, Spotlight. I'm pretty sure I found them. I know I have seen bigger ones in the same style as the littler one there that I showed you. Um, but I just I have never bought them. When I need something stronger um, than what I have here, I use the um, the ones for the binders. They're metal and they they have two wire clamps, like wire levers that you can squeeze. I just uh, went looking for them and I can't find them, so that's something else that is still in the shed that I have yet to unpack. But while I didn't find them, I did find these, which I've been meaning to tell you guys about. And these I just got from my local office supply store as well. And they're called binding combs they uh, you use them on your folders if you're putting together folders and what I do is if I can find my old scissors and I'll just grab a bobbin one second they are great for your bobbins so I cut them off and then it okay it just winds just a circle of plastic and you put it on your bobbin to hold your bobbin Stop them unwinding. So I just thought I'd show you those. They come in uh, very handy. So this is, I think there's 25 of these plastic things in here. There's a lot anyway. And then there's like, you know, a tremendous amount of the actual circles on there. More than I'm ever going to need, put it that way. So, yeah, I just thought I'd show you guys those. And when I find the clips, I will be sure to show you in another video. Um, so, yeah. Also, <coughs> drop in the comments what, um, by any bag you would like me to make next I've got a few that I'm tossing up over but if there's any um, that you have a preference you know really wanting to do just trying to figure out uh, which way I'm going to want to put this to start with mm, yeah I'll have this down on my machine so I'll put my wonder clips that way that one's got to flip around. So when I sew this, I'm going to have the bag front actually laying on my machine like that. And I'll be sewing it that way. So yeah, drop down in the comments if there's a pattern that you would like me to do. I have um, a lot of buy any patterns. I think in one of my other videos, maybe the Easy Does It or the Take a Stand or something, I think I show uh, what I have. But um, if I don't have it, I'm quite willing to get it because I do eventually plan on doing one for every bag. So, but it's just there's a couple um, that I really want to do and I just can't make up my mind on which one is next so if you guys have got any uh, preferences give me a yell I'd appreciate it because it uh, stops me from having to pick them out of a hat essentially I stick them in a, 
I stick them in, stick them in a container on a piece of paper and pluck it out that way because uh, I can't make up my mind. All right. I just want to clip it all the way around, take it to the machine, and sew them down. And then I'll bind it, and then I'll do the um, back. <coughs> it certainly doesn't help having to have the bag, you know, manhandle it so much with sewing on all these extra components. It certainly doesn't help the poor shape of these these side strips, I can tell you. They um, get bent out of shape quite a bit. Alrighty guys, I'll be back. I thought I'd just show, I thought it might be easier to sew the binding down first on this. I thought it might give me a better chance of getting a much neater finish, given that I could sew it with less bulk. And then I sewed it on this side as well. And now I've gone and put the front on. So I just thought I'd show you that. And this is how I'm going to sew it, okay? So it's going to go... like that, under my machine. Alright. So the front of the bag is actually on my table here. I have the paper on there because I was sewing the vinyl and it sticks to the perspex. Okay. There we go lovelies, all nicely done and finished. Front is on and bound. The back is on. Binding done. There is the strap for the trolley sleeve. In the pocket. And then So I'll quickly finish this and then I'll do a run through of the components because that way if people are wanting to use this as an example to work out the colour combinations for their material, they'll be able to. So there we go. That compartment nicely done. A lot of room in there. Then page one, page two, and then another big compartment. Alrighty, well thank you guys um, for coming along on this journey. So I'll quickly uh, run through these components. So we have pocket A, bag front, coordinating fabric, pocket B, bag back, straps of course, then we have side strips here, both of these here are side strips. This is a zipper strip. Now I might continue on the outside for now. Side strip base. Zipper strip base. Then when we open it, pocket C, this vinyl compartment. Page one, front and back. Page two, front and back, and pocket D, right here. Alright, so that's it guys, so thank you very kindly for joining me. I hope um, this tutorial can help you in some way. I enjoy doing them, and if you wouldn't mind leaving some comments on uh, future patterns, or comments about the bag. I'm happy to answer any questions. And I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.